Welcome, all right, all right, welcome. Welcome to the show, welcome to Invite Sent. Thank you so, so much for being here. All those in the chat, wow, a lot of folks here excited to see this amazing new game out coming out tomorrow. We're gonna jump into a game here shortly that you haven't played yet. Oh, well, maybe you have played the demo. But hey, I'm Bubba Gatter. Thank you so much for being here today. Super excited for episode nine of season three of Invite Sent. We're gonna jump into some fun. I just wanna let you know that we'll be having some other shows coming up soon. On Friday, Zach Teep, we're gonna be playing some games. Next Thursday, we're actually gonna go visit the Army West Point Esports Arena uh, on the show, the Rave Esports show with Kevin and Andrew from Xtron, and we're gonna actually go through and mess around with all their stuff uh, at the at the Army West Point Arena. And then uh, we'll be uh, also having Rob Davis, AKA uh, Street Taco here in a few weeks coming up. And we've got a lot of other shows as well, but so glad you guys are here. A lot of people are all in the chat. If you're in the chat, say hello. Lots of people on all different platforms. We are on Kick, uh, two Twitters, two YouTubes, two um, Facebooks, LinkedIn, uh, Twitch. Uh, we are also on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you guys for being here over on TikTok. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're so ready for this as well, VF. I'm going to bring in our very amazing guest today. Miss Renee, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'm so glad you had. You are on a very busy schedule right now. <laughs> and I'm so honored that you got to come. You're able to come and hang out and show us your amazing, amazing game. So thank you so much for being here. I yeah, am super pumped. happy. I am pumped. Now, we're going to jump into the game. I'm going to pull it up. And I, I, when I was talking to you before the show, um, <clears throat> I've, no, I've usually always do these games where it's a, a two-player multiplayer of some sort where uh, we're playing together and we're both playing, but it's my viewpoint. But this time, I really think the DVD commentary might be the way to go here in the sense of why you did things uh, certain ways. And this game you've been working on for nine and a half, ten years that looks so clean and so pretty, and I'm so excited to jump into it. And this is just the demo, because tomorrow the game comes out, March 7th. Man, tell me, I want, I want you to tell me why this game, you, you've said a lot on social media, but why this game is different from other games. Yeah, I would say that Potions of Curious Tale is quite different in that it has that cozy aesthetic, but it's still an adventure game. But while it's an adventure game, like combat's not always the answer. So it requires strategy, like puzzle solving, like truly your wit are your greatest weapons in this game. And uh, you can definitely uh, figure that out just from the very first boss fight, which happens all of 30 seconds into the game. <laughs> Well, let's do it. Let's let's jump into the game. Uh, it's there is some whoops, there's some game audio here that I'm loving. Um, that is fun. I got it. I got it going in the chat. If you're listening, you can hear it. But it starts off. So we've got Luna. What is the basis of Luna? What is her character? Where, where Luna? I, I obviously Luna Lovegood is one of my wife's favorite characters in Harry Potter. We had a dog named Luna, but Luna to you, where did that name come from? Yeah, um, so Luna is a twelve-year-old witch, and uh, growing up, born in you know the late eighties, early nineties, uh, definitely there's a lot of affection for uh, witches and wizards and uh, high fantasy as mm -hmm. well. And um, something that's very powerful and feminine is like the concept of the moon, right? Like women are uh, connected to the moon a lot. And so uh, I thought that Luna was a very fitting name for her. And actually, I didn't know what her name was going to be. Um, her name is Girl in the code. Her, she's just Girl <laughs> everywhere. Um, but when I got the first character design and she had that little moon on her hat, I was like, Luna. Mm -hmm. Luna is a good name for her. And I, uh, I think it works really well. I love that. Um, Later, she gets a cat a companion, and his name oh, is Helios. Okay. So they're sun and Helios. moon, and very complimentary. Wow, this this is I I feeling educated as we play on well, I guess Latin. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so we start out with Luna in the uh, the bottom of a ship. Sounds like as I hear it, and um, I want to I want to while I'm 
rolling here. We got a lot of people. We got 20 people watching right now. Please, if you're in the chat, ask any questions. This is Renee. She is the creator of this game, Potions of Curious Tale. It is on Steam right now. The link is in the chat. The link is on the Twitter post. Uh, you can go and download the demo right now. Tomorrow, the game comes out March 7th. Is there, tell us a little bit about the, the release. Is there a price? Is it free? Is there, what's the what's the rate for the game? Yeah, so it launches tomorrow at 10 a.m. PST and it's going to be launching at uh, 19.99 plus a 15% launch discount. Nice. However, there is a very hefty demo, uh, <laughs> probably two to three hours that you can play for free oh right gosh. now. And your demo save loads into the full game. So there's no risk in figuring out if this is a game for you or not. And uh, even your achievements will back propagate. Um, so oh I made sure, especially to have such a large demo that it wasn't going to make anyone sacrifice anything if they actually enjoyed the demo and played it a lot. Renee, I, I, I know you know this stuff well, but man, your, your history, the stuff you've done for the community, for the game development community, games, the, well, all the stuff you just said made so many people happy. Uh, namely <laughs> me as well, but um, I, I will say that is a huge uh, plus for from a demo to the full game. I, I can only think of one of the game that made me excited uh, like that was um, a Star Wars game where when the game is updating on your PlayStation or something, it lets you play as Darth Vader in like the snow world from Empire Strikes Back uh, just to get used to the game, which I know a lot of games are doing that now, but. I'm super excited because if you guys are out there, there's so many people here in the in the chat. Please feel free to say anything, ask any questions. Um, I'm gonna keep jumping in the game. I know we have a boss fight coming here, and I love that you've also are gonna be teaching us how to use healing, which I definitely want to talk about. Uh, healing compare, I'm sorry, potions compared to this normal slash and shoot of video games that this game really has uh, a lot to stand on. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So I feel like so many, you know, action adventure games, fantasy games, you're supposed to play as a hero, uh, but then you're rewarded for just like slaughtering every wildlife creature you see, which doesn't feel super heroic, right? Um, now, that's not to say it doesn't make sense to get into combat when something is threatening you or if there's items or something you need off of a creature, but... You know, to be rewarded for slaughtering every fluffy bunny you see just feels, you know, not like a super heroic thing to do. And so um, Potions was designed around how do you make a player consider what they should fight and what they shouldn't without making like some sort of, you know, enforced morality karma system, mm -hmm. right? You know, it is based around resource management, around your potions. And to get the rare ingredients that you need to get the best ingredients you need, you have to be really strategic with how you engage with enemies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you're done with the lower level enemies, they are a waste of your resources. You just avoid them because they're, they're not really worth it. Um, it's also, I mean, Luna's a 12 year old witch. <laughs> She's, she, she's, she's smart and she's strong in her own way, but she can't just go pick up a broadsword and like, you know, swing it around. In fact, yeah, love, she can't this. actually. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> I love that you, I love this part. You're, it's so much game development. Like right here, this knowing to get out of the way. Um, I, I, the, I played, I played up to the end of this a minute ago and I, I love that I had to learn. And that's, that's definitely game development 101. And I tried everything around here and I was like, okay, what about these? And okay, it's forcing me to get hit to know that it's not good. Oh, and look, they damage the swords. And you have Sinbad, which is really cool, by the way. Yeah, um, so Sinbad's uh, praising you here because in the attack that the Kraken did on you, uh, it actually hit those weapons and uh -huh. damaged itself. And now you're saying, oh, wait, okay, there is a strategy I can take here. Because at first players are thinking, well, I can't pick up the swords. What am I supposed to do? Like, how am I supposed to attack it? And yeah, certainly you get aggressive potions, fire potions and ice potions and like metal spears and such. Um, but at the beginning, it really is about strategy of how do you survive with what you have? And... It is around using the environment, using hazards around you. So I love this. At first, at first, I like, <clears throat> okay, there's oil. It took me a second 
to realize, okay, I didn't even know he was following me on purpose, but I realized, let's get some oil on him because I've seen movies. I've read books. I think I'm smart. <laughs> and then, okay, I want to A lot of people him. go straight for the fire. It just sort of like hisses and splutters since it's wet when it hits the fire, but... There, we go. there you go. Nice. <laughs> so I'm, I'm learning as we go. <clears throat> Look at that. I didn't swing an axe or anything. Um, the artwork. Tell me about the artwork. This this artwork on the right compared to the game artwork, obviously different on uh, how close we are. But what? who did this art? And can you talk about it? Yeah. So having development over nearly 10 years um, mm -hmm. actually means that I've had a lot of people um, join and leave the team. So... Okay. Um, Sinbad itself uh, was done by Atlas Lin. Atlas Lin is our main character artist and animator. He did Luna, Luna's artwork, a dialogue. A lot of the dialogue characters uh, were done by him. Sinbad's uh, in-game animations were actually done by Roma Jensen. So okay. um, some of the characters, a lot of the creatures uh, were mm -hmm. created by her. And then uh, some of the other character art was done by Abby Snyder. So. You'll you'll see wow. all of their work um, yeah. across these different different scenes, and then all of the beautiful background art was done by um, Jake Neal. So he's been with the project almost the entire time. So, <clears throat> do you have a number of people who have had their hands in total in this game? Yes. Uh, so I will note that I credit everyone, no matter if they contributed to one asset or just contributed hundreds of hours. Uh, so across um, all time, I've had 19 people contribute to this game. Holy cow. Takes a village. Takes a village. A yeah. Talk to me a little bit about why we're here um, and I'm learning the game. A little bit of your history. You used to be at the International Game Developer Association. Tell me about your history there, what you did. Yeah. People don't know. There's a lot of people here today who probably know you. That's why we've got a large viewership today. But yeah, tell us about your time there. Yeah. So I actually didn't go to school for a game development degree. I went to school okay. for engineering with a focus in mechanical engineering and started out in biotech because <laughs> I wanted to be a biomechanical engineer okay. and, and was. Um, when I realized I could be a game developer, I decided to switch over to being a game developer. And uh, career changes, particularly early in your career, uh, require a bit more networking and action to prove why someone should hire you over a fresh grad that has you know, directly studied the subject. Okay. And the IGDA was a really wonderful resource for me back then. Um, mm. I went to tons of IGDA Seattle events. I, I networked a lot within that community. I learned things and made connections. <laughs> it's really what got my career started. And so I decided to give back to the IGDA. So I joined the Seattle uh, Board of Directors and then eventually the International Board of Directors. And then when the executive director, basically the CEO of the organization, stepped down, um, I took over her role for three years. So that was in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that because it was right before the before pandemic. COVID, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I started, had about yeah. Yeah, I had about six months to get my feet under me uh, and then had to change all of the plans that I had made over those six <laughs> months. Um, so it was, it was a very uh, interesting time. But it's so lovely to be able to give back to um, other game developers. For people who aren't aware of the IGDA, it's the International Game Developers Association. It's the largest nonprofit membership organization in the world whose mission is to support and empower developers in achieving fulfilling and sustainable careers. So, um, you know, we're concerned about the layoffs, about um, workplace health and safety, you know, preventing harassment. Um, providing resources so people can transition career roles, uh, mm -hmm. grow in their career roles, support each other, find the people they need to connect with to be successful. And I was I'm really honored that I was able to um, be part of the, the efforts to really support game developers, particularly uh, through the start of COVID, because that was such a troubling time. Well, I definitely want to jump into that here in a bit because we both started in the nonprofit gaming world in 2019 uh, when I took over the foundation as well, the um, which was Varsity Esports Foundation, now Video Games and Esports Foundation. And I remember we've been on panels together and 
other things, and I know um, Joni Kraut as well uh, for Women in Game International. Uh, women's Women in Game International. Uh, we all just there's only a few of us in gaming as um, nonprofits, and uh, I really appreciate what you did and are still doing uh, with gaming. But I I know with all the layoffs in the, over the past 16 months, um, and I've been doing a lot of reading um, from Jason Schreiner with uh, all the the crunch and everything around gaming. What is there ever going to be a cycle <laughs> where we don't have uh, large layoffs like this every few years or after the end of a game that comes about to be developed? Is and This is a heavy first question, but it's just so evident and, and big right now in an industry with all the layoffs. Is there going to be another one of these in 18 months or five, five years or whatever? And what do we do? What do we do differently with our industry? Yeah, so I think this round of layoffs and uh, job instability is uh, relatively unique. It's going to be something you only see every decade or so. Wow. And okay. that's due to the causes behind it. Um, one of the causes is interest rates on loans. Uh, you know, that's really a boring response. But um, when interest rates are high on loans, it means that businesses are unable to take loans as safely and sometimes have to make business changes. Um, one well, of the other reasons is COVID. Uh, COVID was mm. actually a really wonderful time for games because there are so many people who started getting into games during the pandemic, mm. which caused a really large boom of growth. Some companies um, grew unsustainably during that time. So with the uh, growth that they underwent during that time, immediately followed by the lack of aggressive growth and high interest rates, um, you saw a, a very strong like belt tightening um, and probably an overreaction um, from a, a number of companies because they wanted to um, go to a, a place of more financial you know, uh, safety, being more conservative with their financial spend. Now, I think you know, there's a reason that people are looking to Nintendo during this time because they note that their most valuable assets are their game developers. So why yes. would they lay them off? <laughs> and it, I do think it is very short-sighted uh, to to make a lot of layoffs because the impact that that has isn't, you know, people aren't just cogs in a machine. You can't just say, oh, I don't need this cog right now. It's a little expensive. There's huge uh, impacts for, um, you know, the the motivations for your team, mm -hmm. the growth of people that you've invested in, you know, it takes three to six months to ramp up a new employee. And so letting go of people um, can really, uh, can really damage that. Yeah. If you hit the space bar, you'll pick up everything okay, around you. you. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> there we go. Nice, nice. Um, and so I think that there's, you know, there's a, a multi-pronged approach to addressing this. Uh, first of which is providing immediate support for the game developers, which have been affected. Um, mental health support, financial support, you know, any support that they can receive right now is important to keeping them in a good and safe place. Uh, the other, you know, really important thing to do is to to teach businesses more about like actually good financial business practices. Yes. You know, it's. It's really easy to to overlook this, but you know, particularly for you know mid-sized and smaller studios, a lot of the people who are leading these studios are game developers, and and that's great. I think that that means that they have you know passion and interest uh, in game development, but a lot of them don't have um, the same business experience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to to realize that um, growing with the rate of the market can lead to crashing with the market as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that it can be very tempting to, you know, double the size of your company to try to keep up with sure. um, the rate of the market. Sure. But doubling the size of your company in two years is a good way to have unsustainable growth. It's hard to, <laughs> to actually yeah. support all the employees. It's hard for them to be as effective. And if you're counting on, you know, continuous growth well, unfortunately, it just doesn't always grow at the same rate, yeah. and, and that can lead you to um, 
to things like this where we end up with a bunch of layoffs right. and that's just very disrespectful to the employees like they are they are people who have invested their lives in your company and so you should you know try to try to treat that with with the reverence Sorry. it deserves i didn't know that was ash i'm glad i <laughs> it's a little he's a little jumping around uh, nobody's talking in the chat i think they're as mesmerized as i am by what you're saying and this game so yeah. if you guys have any questions please jump in but I just uh, found the cutest thing ever that was Ash jumping around. And it died. <laughs> <laughs> so if you notice, you actually have a book now that has a little notification oh, icon. Okay. Um, and so that will give you more information about what just happened. Small bear. That is so cool. Turns into Ash when picked up. Okay, I see. So that's sweet too. Okay. Okay, so these this is my uh, index that I, I don't have a, a turkey gobbler yet, it looks like. You're standing near it so you can see it, oh. but you haven't oh. gotten any ingredients okay. from it. Yeah. I, I see. Okay, right there. <laughs> Interesting. All right. And I have other things here. So that's what I've collected. So, the, so I see this feather one, those things I have collected, owned, and then this book. Things I'm near is this bag a thing? Oh my gosh! Look at this. Okay, yeah, I'm I, I'm blown away here. Um, hey, mom, <laughs> mom's in the chat. Thanks, mom, for saying something in the chat. There's forty, almost fifty people here watching, and uh, everybody's just mesmerized. I think. Um, so I, I got some Zelda, Stardew Valley. But I got lots of vibes here. <laughs> lots of things uh, the, the like you can't get through this rock just yet because but it looks like it'll shatter hmm. yep That's yep and that, on the path. that little plot there with the uh, uh -huh. and the plant in it that's another thing let's go oh look at that i bet this is crazy hmm, i wonder what i get put in there yes yeah, so like i said Ooh. it's it's a game that's really based around wit there's a lot of puzzles some more obvious some less obvious um and as you can see under that turkey of the the soot sprite just had one observation for it you uh -huh. pick it up and it turns into ash the turkey has two um so okay, right so how are you getting things from the turkey what ingredients okay. can you get from it with what interactions and you know some characters have you know four or five interactions uh -huh. with them and that's how you get super rare ingredients with higher mana values that will make more uh, powerful potions because wow. just straight killing something and you know, that's not necessarily going to uh get you the items you need you'll get pretty simplistic items there yeah. but if you if you charm or scare or trick it or freeze it or you know light it on fire it, it might give you a different ingredient interesting and so yeah i mean i've got this this that rock in the place is i'm gonna need a potion it sounds like to be able to break through and then there's some I, there's something here that won't let me cross over the turkey right now i'm gonna have to figure out how to do that mm -hmm. uh, and obviously i'm looking for a mushroom right now which might be in the forest because granny it, let guess, you know it was in the deep dark forest yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay there's a rat okay is it good or bad i don't know but there's a fire Okay. There's a rat and a fire. Let's see. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, uh, can I do this? Is he stuck? Okay. No, he doesn't stop attacking. All right, let's see. Rat. Long tail road north of the back of the hill. And Ash. <laughs> I do think that most <laughs> living creatures are weak to fire, though. Mm, that's good to know. Okay, so another lead him to danger. Come on. Aha! Get wrecked, bro. <laughs> Okay, and... So, you know, even without having a, a potions yet, you can still be hmm. effective at neutralizing threats. Thank you for leading me to that. I think rats <laughs> are, uh, they don't like fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you got it. You're like, oh, look, a fire mm. and a rat. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a, I'm not just playing the game. You know, there's a lot of things going on here in the chat. Okay, guys? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> This, this game is, I'm, I'm getting some flow right here now. I've got challenge and skill happening. Oh my, there is a bull. Okay, let's let's understand what's happening. Oh, we've got the demo parts. So the bull is not a creature, okay, actually. He's he's the farm the farm creature, Aww. so. 
There's certainly interactions you can do with him, but you cannot kill him. Um, the reason his health bar is gray is because he's immune to attacks. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Looks like there's a spot, then I'll need to go up there with some other red thing that was blocking. Okay, so I need to go get some... Ooh. Yeah, I need to go get some mushrooms. So we need to go back. Yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for being here. This is a large... Uh, I think people wanted to come see this game, Renee, because... Uh, you know, 10 is kind of a max that kind of show up. We've got five times that. They really are excited about that game. If you guys don't know, this is Potions, A Curious Tale. This is Renee Giddens. She is the creator of this game, and it comes out tomorrow, the full game, March 7th on Steam. The link is in the uh, description as well as on Twitter. We're going to go to the Deep Dark Forest and check it out now. And Renee is helping out with uh, talking about her experiences uh, with this game, with her history and her career, as well as giving me some commentary and helping me helping me uh, through this game as I talk. So, um, we talked about the art, we talked about a little bit of the history, you're sh helping me get through with these uh, little fun characters. What was the hardest thing about this game? Well, give me give me two top three things that were the hardest about getting this game done or rolled out. I mean, I think the, the hardest thing about getting the game done was getting it done, honestly. <laughs> you know, working on such a, a large game over a long period of time can be very, um, very draining. You know, uh, it's not like someone's paying you to do this, right? I think I've put in about 10,000 hours on this game. 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. Yeah, I know that's a big number. That's, a, that's about five years of full-time work. Hey Siri, um, how many days is 10,000 hours? 416 days, Renee. More oh. than I played World of Warcraft. <laughs> why, why is it every guest I have has played World of Warcraft? I don't know why. We all <laughs> love World of Warcraft way too much, and I'm fighting every day not to play it again. Um, I've what, actually what taken your... inspiration from for some of the boss fights from um, okay. World of Warcraft raids because uh, I'm, I'm a big raider. <laughs> what what uh, Horde Alliance? What's what's your what's your go-to? I play a Night Elf Druid. Night Feral Elf, Druid. Oh, I love Night Elf Druid, man. Oh, I love the Druid character. That's my favorite. I played a lot of Torin because I'm always the big guy in things. But I, I am also not a heavily raider. Um, I've done a few, like Ice Crown and whatnot. But mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely like creating a new character every six months because I'm that kind of guy. But it sounds like you have raiding experience. What was and your this... most favorite raid? Ooh, I do definitely think it's ICC. Yeah, I Ice Crown mm -hmm. Citadel mm -hmm. was really up there. Um, that's uh, Wrath of the Lich King is when I really started getting into yeah. raiding. Yeah. Um, but I, I have so. ahead of the curve for most expansions. Uh, you, for those who don't know, ahead of the uh, curve means yeah, that, that mean? um, you Neither defeated one. the heroic level uh, end boss of the entire expansion um, before the the patch after it. So before there are buffs. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I didn't know that. I I was purely a guy saying, oh, let's create a new character. <laughs> yeah, I've been the same character for 17 years. So oh, it's... That's so cool. <laughs> uh, and I've been in the same guild for 17 years as well. So that's Are actually you still playing right playing. now? Um, uh, I was playing up until the end of this last raid. So right now it's sort of okay. in between raid time. But Classic, when it comes retail, back in... which one you... Retail, yeah. Retail? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in the chat, does Renee do the graphics? Yeah, we talked a little bit about that. She has got, I mean, I guess five to six people, maybe, uh, that have done graphics with you? Yeah, there are, there are a lot of different people who have contributed to the graphics. So the the props and environment in UI art mm -hmm. is um, mostly uh, Jake Neal, um, you know, like 98% Jake Neal. Uh, the character art and animation, um, that has been uh, Atlas Lynn, Roma Jensen, Wesley Eldridge, and okay. Abby Snyder. Okay. Uh, but um, in terms of like art implementation and things like that, um, that was definitely me. Most of the VFX is me. Mm -hmm. And like some random things. I made the soot sprites. They're not particularly uh, graphically <laughs> intense. Uh, those little books on the bottom of your bar I made. Uh -huh. um, but nice. for the most part, I it is I am not artistic enough to. What you, um, what'd you build the sprite and the books in? What what does what program? Or do you use your hand draw them or? Uh, I used I used Photoshop. Actually, Photoshop. I only picked up Photoshop this last year. I had oh, been yeah. using GIMP before that because oh, I, right, right. you know, living that indie <laughs> that, life, that, anything yeah, that's that is free. The, <laughs> that is it. 
I since I've been teaching uh, for so many years at you know, higher, higher ed, it's been. Ooh, look at that! Ooh, okay, I saw another one of these somewhere else. Yeah, um, yeah. You, I, you, okay, you saw two all right, of them. learning. Yeah. Um, yeah, the 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 discount on Adobe has been great as an educator. But my mom is in the chat, and she is a graphic designer artist for longer than I've been alive, and so I've learned a ton of Adobe uh, from her over the years, and I love it. So this is interesting. Um, Potions of Curious Tale is actually based on fairy tales and folklore from around the world. Okay, okay. So a lot of the main story has you interacting with creatures from folklore, uh, okay. from, you know, yes. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves uh -huh. to um, Sun Wukong from Journey to the West to Baba Yaga from Slavic Legend. Oh, no way. Wow. Yeah. Um, wow. And... During doing all of this research for lore, uh, there were so many characters I wanted to include that just would have not been actually possible. Uh, and so there are 56 collectible cards in the game, each one okay. which has um, a lore creature from around the world. And um, okay, push it nice. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, so close. Uh, 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 uh. I got to time it right. I don't know how many potions to heal. Uh, 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 there we go. <laughs> Ooh, a hezzy right there for a second. And um, it, it's been really fun doing that research mm -hmm. and being able to include these characters because people respond really well. I mean, as you noticed, you dealt with Sinbad and a Kraken on your way in. <laughs> That's, you know, uh, tales from the Middle East uh -huh. and from, right. um, yeah, the the Nordic area. So Wow. This is, I'm having a lot of fun um, with this game. And, uh, it's it's okay. I need to go. I need to go, Granny. I've, I've got all my. I've collected my quest items. You can craft now. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Because I need a heal. I need a heal. I, the mushroom about took me out. <laughs> granny always heals you when you go home. So oh, you're, you're, look at you're fine. Yeah, okay. she's very sweet. Yeah. Oh, it's so. It's the soup. It's got to be the soup. That she makes. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, or mana, or okay. Mana value. Ah, okay. One air contributes one air mana. Two different types of mana. Okay, if you guys are in the chat, the, the, there's, <laughs> I, we're linked. If you're on LinkedIn, YouTube, I know Agnad. Uh, thank you so much for being here. If you're on uh, tw uh, Twitch or wherever you are, uh, yeah. If you got questions about how to develop a game, uh, if you got questions, as I have some questions about uh, game development when it comes to uh, the first levels, right? The first levels of uh, especially with flow, trying to create something not too challenging, but requires enough skill for you to then, I, I'll go to Fortnite easily here, is um, you play uh, AI bots the first few times you go out. And that's why yeah. I create way too many new emails to play that game. So I can continually have, play against AI bots um, instead of real people. But I, I wanna learn a little about the game development process of why you did what you did in these first 10, 15 minutes of the boss fight and uh, learning what the keys are. What, what, what is the, what is the kind of go-to best practice and why uh, is, are these first levels the way they are? Yeah, so uh, from a development standpoint, there are a lot of people who say, develop your tutorial last. And I think that that is correct, but in, in practicality, you also can't. <laughs> Because if you want to demo your game and get feedback on it, you need to have a tutorial. So what I would recommend is be okay with throwing away your tutorial multiple times. Um, oh, okay. And that's what I did. You know, my very first version of this game, the tutorial was one of those tutorials where you basically walk down a corridor and get instructions as you're walking down the corridor before it releases you into the game. It's not very fun. It's not very engaging. But it worked. <laughs> it, yeah. It's better than just having a sign on the table with 20 different instructions to teach people about a, a complicated game. Uh, the second version of the tutorial is mm -hmm. actually basically like uh, the initial part of the third or fourth quest in the game. Uh, and with a sort of contrived start that's quite similar. Luna is trapped in a spider web. And in order to get out, she has to throw a potion. In throwing a damaging potion to get out of the spider web, she hurts herself and then has to heal herself. Um, and that that worked relatively well, but it didn't feel 
quite as epic as I wanted. And um, the reason that I also leaned into the the Kraken boss fights to, to start the game is I wanted it to feel epic. And I also wanted it to be very informative of what type of game we're getting into. So yeah. it's called Potions, A Curious Tale. The uh -huh. game is absolutely about potions, but it is just as much about strategy and wit and using the environment to your advantage. And so I really, really wanted to communicate that very quickly in the game. Uh, and that's why I decided to, to set up this Kraken fight. Uh, okay. It's also a good way to um, story-wise start the introduction, right? You know, Luna is coming to a new town. You are coming with her to the new town. So everything can be introduced. I, I just guessed. I thought I was going to get like a, uh, a what is this going to be kind of thing. But you I made only, a healing potion. Yeah, you only get predicted results for um, recipes you know. Um, okay. But one of the reasons that everything is mana based is because I wanted it to feel very good to experiment. So you can just okay. start slinging things together. Uh, the only rule I would suggest, and you've managed to get around this, yeah. is um, don't don't combine more than um, two different elements usually. Uh, there are some potions where you can work with three elements, and particularly at the beginning, you can okay. get three elements, um, but it, it's more likely to fail. Um, so just, I mean, you can put it in a third element if you want. I just wouldn't do anything that's... Um, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So, but it'll... Will it require me... You have to have three ingredients, but you can do like oh. two water, two earth. So I see what you're saying. Categories, categories. Yeah, 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 categories. I misunderstood. Okay. So that now you know so, that's going to be a potion one. of healing, okay. but you can replace. Yeah, let's do time. Okay, I see what you're saying. See these mushroom spores compared to mushroom. they're in two different so, categories. Yeah, they have two different types of mana. Oh, you, okay, that one gives me... So that, that's where it can okay. get a little complicated, but uh -huh. you might want to put in, like... Um, let's see, yeah. What do we got? Let's see. Uh, let's do two blueberries. Okay. And a uh, ash. An ash. Okay. All right, we're going we're going off script here, everybody. <laughs> we getting... I actually don't know what this is. Let's see. Oh, mine <laughs> comes oh, acid. There all we right. go. You're yeah. going down, rats. <laughs> uh, Brian uh, asks, how do you maintain the original idea of the game through time, or rather, does 10 years affect the game? Yeah, so um, that's a really good question. I've actually made a short video on this, but uh, okay. to summarize, um, when you are concepting a game, you should come up with the elevator pitch. Come up with your pitch okay. for your game early, and then use that as your guiding light. Uh, it is very easy to add in uh, additional mechanics that don't actually harken towards your overall idea. So, for example, in Potions of Curious Tale, I originally planned having a day-night system as well as an economy system where you opened up your mm -hmm. potion shop. But that was all of a distraction from the potion adventure full of puzzle solving that I actually wanted the game to be. And while, you know, that could have added in additional gameplay time, mm -hmm. I don't think that would have actually added to the game itself. There would have been too much to do. It would have been, you know, two different games sort of squashed mm -hmm. together. And because yeah. I had that, um, that concept, that elevator pitch as my guiding light, I was able to, to cut out those features that were not going to contribute to the core gameplay I really wanted. Ooh, magical cards. Yes, I've unlocked magic with the bronze card. You're going, ooh. Okay. Uh, search around the farm. Find Granny some stone of recall. Well, first, obviously, I have an explosion thing. I'm going to try and destroy this rock. This <laughs> my first test. And now I just got to know how to do that. Oh, what? Oh, wait. I don't think I recognized this place last time. This kiln type. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's the blacksmith. Okay, oh, so I can't go in there yet, because I shatter easily. All right, one, and, oh, oh yeah, let's go. I thought I was going to throw over. All right. <laughs> so I'm out of that potion. Okay, that's good to know. Maybe I can get something here. Oh, yeah. A lot of ash. A lot of ash <laughs> that has no character to them. They all died, and we've got a Fenrir. Fenrir. So there's how many of these cards? 56. 56. That's actually there's... how many viewers we have right now. Hello, 56 viewers. 
Oh, look at that. A card for each of you. <laughs> Some of them are easier to get, you know. Uh -huh. You know, blasting through a rock and grabbing one is okay. easier. Some of them are behind really okay. complicated puzzles. Ooh, ooh, oh, puzzles. Some this of them is... are kind of hidden secrets. Exciting. You've actually seen one of them. Um, okay. But, you know, it's a... Oh, okay. it's actually one of the gold cards, so that is a lot harder to, to figure out how to acquire so, the rarest type. Okay, now I know I saw. I'm having way too much fun, everybody. I'm so sorry if <laughs> uh, if you're watching. This is great. Feel free to ask a game, uh, ask a question. Your uh, name will pop up. Okay. <gasps> Wait. Did I have a key? Have you I had a gold, or you had a bronze card? Uh, okay, so, so those that's are my those are card gates. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, can I get apples? Um, Later you can, not in the okay. demo. Oh, oh, there's a uh, wall there. Oh my gosh, there's a tunnel. I am the kind of explorer all... I just, you know, played last February, I played Hogwarts Legacy, and I looked on every nook and cranny for everything. I am that person that goes everywhere. It's definitely the game that encourages that, right? That's great. Oh my. Um. Okay, so, wow, look at this thing. Mm -hmm. Hello, Ella. Thanks for being here on Kick. Yeah, we're great. We're having fun. We're playing playing Potions, A Curious Tale. Uh, if you're over on Kick, you can find it on Steam. I don't have the link to it there on Kick because Kick is not as friendly with sometimes finding all the games. But hey, Twitch did have your game as an option to pick. It does. Right? Yeah, awesome. YouTube and Twitch recognize it at least. Yes. <laughs> I'll have to see what, if I can make Kick recognize it. I don't know why yeah. it's a... Uh... Kyle says, you mean Revelio Legacy? Did you play Hogwarts Legacy at all, Renee? I did. Yeah, Revelio. My kids started playing it a few weeks ago and basically just walk around the house saying Revelio. Because that's all we do. So, um, one of, the, actually, I'm looking at my, my desktop. One of the mm -hmm. only icons that's on my desktop is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets uh, PC <gasps> game, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Wow. Um and so for people who don't know this, if you played Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets and you think you've played this game, if you haven't played it on PC, you haven't. Because they hired uh, a different studio for every interesting. platform. Interesting. And they all have the same covers. So the oh. GameCube game is not the same as the PC game. They're completely different games by different studios. Um, okay. I love the level design in that game. I find yeah. it like so compelling and powerful. It has secret hidden areas, like interesting mm -hmm. interactions. Actually, a lot of the puzzle design uh, that is in Potions was inspired by really? me playing this game. And I had to like really hack this game to get it working on a modern <laughs> computer. Um, but it was one of the few games I always have installed because I, I do find it so That's inspiring. So cool. And you... Good. this like two years ago, uh -huh. One of my oldest game industry friends and I were talking um, at a game industry meetup and okay. I mentioned how much I enjoyed that game and how much I, I loved it. And he said, did you know I was the game director? <laughs> <laughs> no way. I had no clue. <laughs> so it was it was really neat to, to know that one of my friends is, is created um, something that impacted um, my idea of game design so much. Ooh. Boom! Get wrecked. Yes, it worked. <laughs> oh, the stone of recall. Okay, so I didn't have a way to lure him into fire, but I used my potion of acid that time. You did. I knew it. I yeah. Knew it was gonna you, be helpful. you do have to. You do have to occasionally be aggressive. Not yes. not too frequently, but I wanted to make sure that players knew. What What is the? I don't really want to find. Oh, I got a red book, by the way. Oh, that's the red book. I feel like I had to pay the cat tax since I was being visited. Hey, who's this? Who's this? This one? is Fiddle. Let's, let's take a look here. Fiddle. Let's let's get a close up there. Fiddle. Hello, Fiddle. <laughs> he is not happy with this. <laughs> um. So, actually, one of the the develop the difficulties of mm -hmm. this past month has been um, I I had two cats, oh, okay. and. My half main coon named Calcifer, mm -hmm. who would sleep on my lap all day when I was working yeah. and sleep with me all night and mm -hmm. follow me around my like my little shadow. Mm -hmm. um, at the very start of the year, he was diagnosed with a very aggressive cancer, and oh I lost gosh. him. Sorry. Um, exactly a month ago. 
Yeah. Uh, so certainly pushing through the end of development of the game yeah, uh, sorry. with dealing with his both his health issues and his loss. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Quite challenging. But he is actually the inspiration for Helios, the cat in the game. Oh, uh, and and yeah. once you recruit Helios, when you're uh -huh. in town, you can pet him. So if anyone plays, please pet Helios for me. Okay, yes. That was, I saw that well, one of the little pop-ups on your, your uh, TikToks. It's like, yes, you can pet the cat. You can pet the cat. You can, you pet, can the pet the cat. cat. And you get an achievement for it. So. Oh, okay, there we go. In Steam or in the game? In Steam. In, in Steam. Steam. Yeah, Man. I think there's 19 achievements that are hooked up. So there I... is so much that goes into this. I, I I'm trying to think, what is the conversation with Steam, or is there paperwork on to get those achievements in there? How does that work? Uh, no, yeah. Sense. So Steam Steam is very straightforward when it comes to achievements and implementation. And so unlike other platforms, uh, so if you're trying to figure out how to set up these things on consoles or okay. what you can do. Uh, all of that stuff's behind NDA. You can't actually see it. Uh, oh. Any any person right now can go look at Steam's documentation mm -hmm. of how developers set up achievements, the requirements behind it, you know, all that information. It's, it's all easily accessible. So if you have any questions about how Steam sets up things, if you're looking to get into game development, mm -hmm. you can just go read their documentation right now. Interesting. And I would I'd recommend doing it if you're interested in game development because yeah. it's not the same as consoles, but it gives you okay. um, a lot of like base understanding of APIs that platforms use. That's good to know. I, I would love to. I, I've made a, a game in Roblox, uh, two games in Roblox that are just purely um, just kind of path forward, kind of jump all over things and uh, kind of like a hangout area. And uh, that's really the most I've done and tried Unreal in um, uh, Unity. What was this game? Is there a, a, a code you were building this in? What particular platform? Yeah, so this is a Unity game, mm -hmm. um, which means it was built in C Sharp. And okay. then I used a few additional tools. I've used Wise for audio, uh, Spine from Esoteric Software for the character animations, oh. which allows you to do uh, bones and different Def mess uh, mesh deformation on okay. uh, 2D assets, uh, which allows them to look a lot more realistic uh, without having to do frame by frame. And then uh, I've used Rewired for controller input. So I don't know if you know this, it has full mm. controller support, full Steam Deck support this as well. Yeah. Nice. All you have to do is pick up a controller too. There's yeah. no like mucking with settings. It just auto That's switches, good. like That's all the buttons good. come up. And then as soon as you touch your mouse again, it switches back over. That's very. Look at that. It's like you. It's like you know this industry and you know what people want. <laughs> like you've heard this over and over. And it's also one of the reasons why playtesting is important, right? Yeah. Like, how'd that go? How, what, was, what was that like? Uh, it's been great. I, I find that um, one of my favorite things that I get out of um, going to conventions and showing my demo at conventions is seeing firsthand player interaction and feedback. Um, I have a Discord server, so I get a lot of messages and feedback through the Discord server, but nothing beats looking at people engaging with your game in person mm -hmm. and seeing when they look confused or when they <laughs> laugh or when they're scared and then adjusting the game um, to really help them out or um, you know, inspire those emotions even further. Okay, so I'm crafting some more potions here. I want to get... Oh, I, oh! I need to do. I'm a, I got heal. I got a. I got a actual quest here to do. Betty bomb. Two m minor healing potions. So pin. I like that I can pin. I like that it tells me. So it's not. It's really just one of each of these categories. Don't have to be something specific. Correct. There are okay. some potions that require specific ingredients, um, okay. but they are more rare. Uh, that we. Yeah, that has two mana values. So you want to replace that with a feather. Oh, okay. I see, I see. Here. There you go. And if you hit and, the up button. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I noticed that too. Thanks. Yeah. So, yeah, 60 people here in the chat. You guys all over are on Kick, we're on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, uh, TikTok, um, Instagram. Thank you guys for being here. So many people uh, seeing this amazing game. If you. If you want to know more about this game or you want to play the demo today, you can go to Steam. The link is in the comments. If you're somewhere where you don't see the comments, go to Steam 
and go search potions of curious tale or just go to google type it in it's it's the only one there because it's it's a, a hot game right now and i want you guys to check it out because tomorrow this full game comes out and i love that uh if you weren't here earlier the, if you play the demo today, then you get the real game tomorrow for 1999, 98, 99, 1999, plus a 15% discount, discount. So it'll be cheaper than that. Yeah. So only for the, the first two weeks. So oh. you gotta get it early. Okay. And all your stuff will carry over all your achievements, all your potion making, all your levels, everything. I love that. Um, I, I, I know we only have like five minutes left, so, um, I want to make sure uh, we, I, I want to get out of here. I don't want. I want to show people all the amazing stuff that's happening. And <clears throat> please go check out Potions of Curious Tale. I want to give you Renee this last sixty seconds, kind of hot seat of anything you want to say. Where to follow? Where to get all the repeat what I said or whatever. Um, follow on social. Talk about the game. But I'm gonna give you the full sixty seconds of the last part of the show to say whatever you want and give you the time. So the story, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you. Um, I really appreciate all the support. And if this seems like an interesting game to you, if you like using your wits and combat not always being the answer, then please check out Potions. Like I said, the demo's free. So you can play two or three hours of the game completely for free. Your saves will work. That's Potions, A Curious Tale on Steam. If you're interested in uh, my career history, the information I share, uh, you can find me on all platforms, uh, pretty much as Riku Cat, R-I-K-U-K-A-T. Though you can find me just as Renee Gittens on um, YouTube, and that's actually where I have a ton of development videos. I have um, more technically complex videos targeted at professional game developers. And then I actually have a new series I've started called Pixels and Dreams, Weaving the Magic of Games, um, targeted at tweens and getting them into game development. <laughs> oh, I heard oh, the gas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I got three boys. I got a 14, 12, and 8-year-old. So, yes, please. I will be listening in. Yeah, I talk about uh, disciplines in the game development industry. Coming up, that's actually where I came up with the uh, talk around developing the concept of your game, coming up with your elevator pitch and how to go about mm -hmm. that. I also uh, have an a entire episode on rubber ducks. Are you familiar with rubber ducks uh, in, in, only, in, in software development? No, only from what the Sesame Street taught me about rubber ducky. <laughs> um, no, what, what is... <laughs> um, it, it's uh, the concept of talking through your problems um, can help okay. you find the solution. So okay. a lot of times, uh, like when someone has a problem and they start explaining it to somebody else, they find the solution before the other person even responds. And so many programmers keep a rubber duck or I keep um, Unikitty on my desk. And if I have a problem, I tell Unikitty about my problem uh, before I tell anyone else. Because a lot of times explaining, earnestly explaining my problem to Unikitty uh, helps mm -hmm. me find the solution before I, I go for more help. Wow. Man, I, I'm, I'm probably not going to do much work today because I'll be playing this game more than likely. And... Um uh being excited for tomorrow for the release of this renee thank you so much for just the years and years dedication to our industry and thanks for spending so many years making this incredible game um i i, I yeah I, I'm, I'm having way too much fun i don't i don't know what i got on my schedule today but it's not going to be anything else except the game probably so <laughs> sorry who else needs me if you want to find me i'll be in potions a curious tale like today I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you. Well, I'm going to close down the show. Feel free to stick around in the control room, and I'll come uh, chat at you when I'm done shutting down the show. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Everybody, thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> I am uh, seriously probably going to be playing this game. I don't care what time it is. I don't care what else is going on in the world. If you are wanting to check this game out, please go to Steam, do Potions of Curious Tell. This has been a special episode of Invite Sent. Uh, different from what you're used to of us playing a game with someone. Uh, we actually had the creator of the game here today. And so many people, over 60 people. Uh, if you want to come back, we'll have another invite sent on Friday at uh, 4 Eastern, 3 Central. We'll be playing some games with Zach T. We, we try to have these games, uh, these uh, shows on Wednesday mornings and Friday afternoons. 
And then I have another show that'll be next Thursday, the Rave Esports Show, where you can check in. We're going to be visiting the Army West Point Esports Arena and checking out their stuff there that they've got done with Extron. But wow, so, so incredibly encouraged that you guys came here to watch this amazing game. Uh, I'm excited about playing some more. I hope you do too. Check it out March 7th tomorrow on Steam. Uh, there'll be some more links in the chat. I'll put some more stuff in the post. But everyone, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Stay amazing, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello there gamers and mental health enthusiasts, today we're diving into a groundbreaking study that explores the intersection of scholarly gaming and mental health education, and how it can impact the self-esteem of adolescents. Picture this, a world where scholarly gaming isn't just about mastering technology-based career skills or dominating the world of video game business. No, it's a world where gaming becomes a gateway to improving mental health. Three visionary educators and a school-based health intervention expert came together to create a curriculum that aligns with academic guidelines from the International Society for Technology Education. This curriculum spans 40 lessons delivered over 14 weeks with a minimum of 120 minutes per week. But here's the twist. 83 schools were invited to participate, but they were divided into two groups, those with mental health moments and those without. The non-mental health moment group got the scholarly gaming curriculum alone while the Mental Health Moment group got an extra layer of education. Mental Health Moments were embedded into 27 lessons, integrating concepts from the PERMA framework and the Collaborative Academic Social and Emotional Learning Standards, otherwise known as CASEL. Now, let's meet our players. 471 participants from both groups, with almost 75% in high school, many experiencing scholarly gaming for the first time. A majority were male, and the racial diversity was broad. At the start, the average self-esteem score was 17.9, with 22.1% reporting low self-esteem. But hold on, the game's just beginning. As the study progressed, it revealed some fascinating results. While 57.7% of participants with low self-esteem at the beginning reported average self-esteem post-intervention, the Mental Health Moments group stole the spotlight. Self-esteem scores improved by 8.3% in the Mental Health Moments group, compared to no change in the non-Mental Health Moments group. How's that for a power-up? Some students even shifted from abnormally low self-esteem scores to normal ranges. The message is loud and clear. Educators, healthcare providers, and adolescent advocates pay attention. Non-traditional educational instructions, like scholarly gaming, combined with mental health moments, can significantly improve students' well-being. And there you have it, a journey through the power of scholarly gaming and mental health moments. Remember, your self-esteem matters, and sometimes, all it takes is a little extra support to level up. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. Until next time, keep gaming, keep learning, and most importantly, keep believing in yourself. Life is busy. Every day we ask questions like, what's happening today? What should I wear? How am I gonna fit everything in? But then there are bigger questions like, why am I here? What's my purpose? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? These are some of life's big questions, but there's rarely enough time to think them through. That's why Alpha exists. Alpha is a place to explore life's big questions in a safe and open environment. It's a series of sessions where anyone can share their thoughts and opinions and ask questions without feeling judged. When you come to an Alpha, you'll notice that first, there's food. 
Whether it's a full meal or a light snack, this is the time to get to know each other in a casual setting. Next, you'll watch an alpha talk. The talks are created to engage and spark conversation. They explore big issues around faith from a Christian perspective. After the talk is a time for discussion. This is the most essential part of any alpha. It allows everyone to share their own opinions on the ideas presented in the talks. It's a time for people with different thoughts, beliefs, and experiences to ask honest questions and have open conversation. Every week, there are guests coming for the first time to an Alpha in their community. Alpha is for everyone, regardless of background or beliefs. There's no pressure, no follow-up, and it's completely free to attend. Come and explore life's big questions. Find an Alpha near you today.